Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you weren't looking for a joyful time this week or this episode looking at while we look at King Woman Celestial Blues. It's a bit of a Debbie Downer, kind of gets you sad, but we are here to, and I don't know if quite say enjoy it, but we're here for it. And I am Tracy Newport. With me as always is the Reverend Ben Lindsay and the Dr. David Pizzo. How y'all doing today, gentlemen? Or tonight, even? It's tonight. It's definitely nighttime. I'm doing all right. Soporific music and all, but I'm ready. I, I will have to say that I don't know that this is any more down than the last album that we did at the gates where they were talking about the end of the Anthropocene and cosmic pessimism. But sure. <laughs> well, this totally is this... more of a downer. Totally. There, yeah, totally. Totally. It's there. Like you, you feel it in your bones hearing this one that it's everything is not okay. Well, that's what she wanted. I mean, it's look at this album this cover. <laughs> yeah. Which is a brilliant. Yeah, this album, album cover. cover. That's it. It is. And angels with the twings cut off. Yes. Not just any angel. <sighs> but yeah, King Woman. This was your show pick. Um, before we get into details, why don't you tell us why you picked it, Tracy? Well, um, the pickings for July were a little thin of artists that I knew. I had originally picked one album, and I and that was the. Uh... Oh God, I'm trying to blank. Oh, I can look it up real quick. It's damn it. I gotta look it up. It but it came out at the same time. It's the one with Jesse Leach and Adam Dirk. Times of Grace. That the uh, Songs of Loss and Separation. That album. But that after, sounds like a real upbeat album. <laughs> it it is. It's so upbeat. As this album is. But that album, I was all more worried because their first album they did 10 years ago under that banner. Even for me, it's kind of on that is it metal, is it not metal line. And I didn't know if that one would be there. And so instead of just picking it and finding out after the fact, I was like, well, we'll just play it safe. And I'll go ahead and pick King Woman, who is the other artist that I knew for July. That ha- that I knew, she her band, that band definitely crossed the metal threshold, in my opinion. So I'd heard their album. I believe their debut in 2018 created in the image of suffering. And uh, I had come to enjoy that album quite a bit. And so I figured, you know, why not? Let's give her their new album a spin as well. Sounds good to me. Whoops. God damn it. Wah, wah, wah. Technical difficulties. So, as Tracy said, this is their second studio album, Celestial Blues, came out on 7.30 of 2021, was recorded at an unnamed studio in Oakland, California, released on Relapse Records, was produced by Jack Shirley, has a runtime of 40 minutes and 49 seconds, Christina Esfandiri on vocals, Pierre Arsendorf on guitars and bass, Jory Regosa on drums, with Jackie Perez Gratz coming in to play cello on the tracks. And this, this is a sludgy beast. It is. And I I knew going into it that one of you guys would not be a fan of this. Like, I knew he's not going to like it. And the other one was like, he might dig it. So I I think it's easy to tell who those people are. (laughs) Let's let's, let's ask the person that is not Death Metal's legal proxy what he thought of the album. Um, I really like it. For one thing, this I have a higher tolerance for this kind of uh, depressed shit anyway. So I, I, I enjoyed that. I also, you know, this reminded me a lot of Sludge because of just the sheer heaviness and the down tempo portion, but you don't often get Sludge with female vocals. And so I really enjoyed that. I think she's a really good vocalist. I think she, if I was going to nitpick, and as a, you know, I've said before on other reviews since we are reviewing this, is kind of, kind of my call to nitpick. I think she used the reverb on her voice just a little too heavily, and it made it kind of hard to understand her sometimes. But beyond that, I think she has a really good voice. 
Um, it was evocative and well written. Um, I know, David, at one point you had said that this kind of reminded you of My Ruin. If you've listened to our My Ruin episodes, you know that I'm in the bag for that sound. I don't think it's as experimental as My Ruin in that it doesn't do as much genre hopping. And it never dials it up fully into like death or any more extreme versions of metal. But I, I really enjoyed the presentation of this. To its detriment. <laughs> I think my ruin is better. Uh, I, and, you know, I'm in general, as you know, I do like things to be a little bit more up tempo. Um, you know, I'm glad this music exists, but usually when things slow down this much, I want to sort of wander off to an electronic place uh or maybe jazz but i think my i think they they reminded me of my ruin and i agree with you it's fun to hear her voice is pretty cool uh the lyrics for grim as shit you're right this album is also quite depressing as only it could be but uh, it drags i don't know if, if they would just I, it, and and to be fair i think the second half of the album it does pick up a little bit and i kind of like that part better but uh the other thing and you know you, those of you who listen to our other reviews that were recorded at the same period listening to the apocalyptician hydra before this did not help like i had 80 minutes of just dragging insanity and so when i hit this i just needed that shot of adrenaline and it never came <laughs> or did not come until later in the album but you know the music is well played her voice is cool. The atmosphere of this album is really neat. It did, I have to admit, grow on me a little bit more as I listen to it more, which I think is more typical of when I listen to things you guys pick that I otherwise might not like. Um, but I won't lie, it wasn't my favorite. So you were right, Tracy. I don't hate it, but it's it's not really my thing. And that's okay. Metal is a big tent. Oh, I knew it was going to be a hard sell for you. And if you even came away without shitting on it, it would be a win in the column for that album. But <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna sh- I'm not gonna shit on it. It's just as I said, it's not my beer, as they say in German. Nicht mein beer. Yeah. Well, then I've been mentioning my ruin now. I see that connection now. Like I didn't put that together prior to you mentioning it mm. about similar styles and stuff without the genre hopping they do. And you know, in the sludginess, I think the one thing that this does, I'm like, we looked at you know, Ember and their doom metalness with the female vocals and them doing their her doing they're doing the sludginess in this album i think what we often don't see when looking at doom metal sludge is also the ethereal high octave female vocals very much like mm-hmm. you you get some higher sure. male vocals occasionally in that mix but you don't get nothing that hits that etherealness that comes across similar to like what the etherealness that came out in black car Edition, its album last year like that is very rarely done i think in this genre specifically with a metal I think that her that they add that that adds an additional like plus to it. Yeah, I think you're right. I you like it that. more than Yob. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I, I also like it more than Yob. Um, hmm. What I was going to say is the etherealness that David you mentioned from the female singing. That's something that is usually in like the high gothic tradition or something like that. So, so a theater of tragedy. Or one of those bands where they they usually do pair it with uh, a male vocalist who's singing the fry vocals, then bring in a female to do the ethereal. So uh, yeah, that's a, a pretty good observation. The lacuna coil kind of thing. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. really listen to them. Yeah. Um, oh, I like it more than Yob. That's I'm sorry. I keep just I can't, I want to shit on. Let me shit on Yob, Tracy, <laughs> a band that I know you like. But that 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 pissed me off more than this because you're right. It doesn't have any of those counterpoints. It's like sludgy, and you're in quicksand, and there's just nothing else going on here. At least there's some stuff floating that I can grab onto. And I I said the same thing to you all about power metal. I think power metal nine times out of ten is better with female vocalists too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it's the range that they try to operate in, and unless you're Rob Halford, I'm not buying it. But um, I think for this, I wish more Doom had vocalists like this. This even up tempoed a little bit. If it were more like My Ruin, I'm going to keep saying that because yeah, I noticed that too, Tracy. To me, this was like a even more down tempo My Ruin, where more quaaludes were involved and hip hop didn't come to the party. <laughs> so that was the thing about My Ruin. There's like you know almost bizarre bundle levels of random at times. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I, I think, know why this music exists, and I go ahead. I was gonna say, I think her personal backstory, I think, plays a part in why this music sounds like it does. Well, you could say that about just about any band, honestly. But, but I mean, like, 
why she's operating at this level instead of like the my ruin all over the place and maybe her herself will get there and later albums but i don't know because a lot of these her first time especially in this one to a degree is dealing with her personal trauma in her past that i think that she's in a sense working through and that's cathartic in that nature for her yeah uh, well i mean i think my room was too and so was corn when we reviewed that and i mean you know um what's that band out of texas uh, um shit i can't think of them uh also fronted by a female vocalist of color um oceans of slumber oceans of slumber i mean you could say the same thing of that and this this does have an oceans of slumber vibe i like this better than i liked oceans of slumber i'm not going to be honest although i I think kimmy is still a great fucking vocalist so i don't necessarily want to cut loose yeah um so yeah i just i mean i think you're right that she is working through her trauma but i think a lot of bands uh, and and singers and songwriters are working through their trauma when they write their music and that's what, like i think just how she personally deals with it is through this storm of our style i don't quite see her ever like i'm gonna jump into thrash metal and do it that way this this already is the more up temple harder stuff i think because she was in what wikipedia described as shoegaze bands like she was in feedback staring at your feet sadness band so th- this i think is the heavier stuff so this is tracy i think this is what we're gonna get and that's okay i you know i listened to the album before this too to be fair to her and i think she is working through trauma and you know as i said i think there's a place for this but it just it just doesn't quite ever pick up enough for me to really get on the rock and stay on it but that's just me i'm the guy who doesn't like yob oh man you pissed me off <laughs> it is like it's on cruise control or you know if i want it to be more charitable since i like sludge i will be as uh, i have often described it as a glacier or a uh a american train which means it's not moving very fast but it's ginormous because it's got a bunch of capitalist bullshit on it so um yeah man a yeah, freight train coming right at you this is kind of what the sound is yeah i think that's an apt dis- I mean, describer a, of it yeah. i will say i think the production values in this album are significantly steps ahead of that first album like they they got ext- they a lot better that first album is almost Slayer-esque levels of reverb on reverb. And this one did the actual yeah, kind of... They gave... They polished up a lot here and kind of allowed stuff to breathe. Well, shall we talk about some songs? Sure. I'll take Tracy's near-death experience as a yes. So I'll go ahead and go first. Um... I think Celestial Blues sets the tempo, which we already said the tempo doesn't change a whole lot. So that's pretty easy to do. It sets the tempo for the entire album, but I do think it's a good opener. Morning Star is one of the best songs I've heard all year. It might be my favorite song that I've heard all year. I love that song a lot. From there, I do think it, there is a drop off in quality. Not terrible, but Bogues is just okay. Golgotha is all right. I think Coil and Psychic Wound are pretty good, and I wanted to like Paradise Lost more than I did, but I do think it's a decent closer. I can uh, go next. Uh, oh, no, Tracy can go next. Go for okay. it, Tracy. So, it. I think all the songs in here are good. I think, for me, the standouts I agree with Ben. I think Celestial Blues is a good opener. Uh, Morning Star, I think, is a great song. I actually enjoy Bose. I think Ogotha is a little lacking, but I really love Coil off this album as well. And I kind of like the front half more than the back half. I, because I want to contradict Tracy, like the back half better. Uh, so let's say Bose is not a bad opener. It's atmospheric and moody, and it does set the tone, Ben. That's right. Morning Star, I know why Ben likes it because he's a Louisiana mutated down tempo freak. But I felt like I was ambling along in a lazy river, right? I was just like floating <laughs> along in an inner tube. But one of the, um, the drummer helps and alligators, I mean, I mean, man. Come on. <laughs> totally. The drum keeps it going. And I agree. It then drags a bit. Then tambourines are happening in Golgotha. But for me, of course, because it picks up a little bit tempo wise, 
Uh, I really like Coil and Entwined, like those two tracks. And I think Psychic Wound is pretty cool. It has that almost sort of Western feel to it. Uh, and some sort of fierce screaming from her. Uh, and then the last two tracks are okay. So I kind of like the first half of Side B are, are definitely my favorite songs that run there. Coil through Psychic Wound. So opposite of Tracy, just to be difficult. He's used to it by now. Mm-hmm. All right, yes. Tracy, you are up. What My are you going to grade this? Here we go. I am going to give this a B plus. I think it's a solid album overall. I think it's, I'd put it slightly above their album that they released in 2017. And I look forward to seeing what they do further on down the line. I'll go next. I'm going to agree with Tracy. I think this is an excellent album. If I was creating this the song morning star would be an a plus i love that song but the the rest of the album doesn't quite reach that level and it's never bad but i can definitely see some of the critiques the, uh, that david leveled against it about it being kind of one note and if you if you are not into this speed it's probably going to bore you a little bit but with all that said i still think it's an excellent album so b plus Uh, I'm going to come in probably higher than you think I'm going to, just because I admit it creates a really cool, awfully depressing atmosphere, and I see what she's trying to do. So that pushes it up for me to a C plus. So a letter of great board, but not catastrophic. That's probably higher than what Tracy thought. But again, I think my ruin and things like a little bit, a little bit more up tempo, kidney thieves pave the way for this. Like there's some stuff I like. Or, or Snake, was it? Uh, Snake River Conspiracy. Yep. It's got a little bit of this going on. So that golf stuff, uh, I think it's somebody's prepared the ground for me. So C plus, is, it's very respectable. It's they, They're passing the class. That they are. What are we doing next, Tracy? Next. For podcast only listeners, we will be doing a blast of Children of Bonham of Ben's pick, or look forward to coming out of a similar time as these do in the future. Um, and that will include Follow the Reaper, or Are You Dead Yet? Halo Blood and Hexed. Spoilers, in case you aren't supposed to know. But for y'all joining us on YouTube and for the podcast only listeners as well, we are taking a look at the return of the classic lineup of anthrax looking at their release from 2012 i believe in worship music or was it 2011 i mi- i missed it so i don't know i think I it was 2011 and i think it was the last one with john bush no, but it might be the return of the, the classic. that's joey belladonna is it joey? The, okay it is joey bella at 2011 it's joey belladonna it's his return to the band the interesting thing behind it is the singer who wrote the lyrics was not John Bush. It was the person they'd gotten to fill in in between Bush and Belladonna. Well, so join us for some wonky late period anthrax lineup changes, but it's still a pretty good album. I'm, I'm going to go look and see who he is because I want to know. Because you're Tracy. Yeah, I've, I've barely heard it, so I'm excited. Because I love Anthrax, but I got off the ride. So. I was I was a little bit salty about them going back from John Bush to Belladonna, but we can talk about that on the episode. Okay, Me so, too. Me too, friend. That sounds like, was, are you serious right now? <laughs> and I liked Story Belladonna at the time. I did too. So maybe it was John Bush that wrote the lyrics for it. It was either him or Dan Nelson, but Joey Bell is singing. Might have been you, Tracy. It could have been. It could have been. I remember Dan Nelson being in there, but I don't think they ever did anything with him except to announce he was in the band. But again, I I wasn't paying that close of attention. It's hard to keep up with Anthrax musician changes. Uh, That's a fair statement. They are not as bad as some bands we've covered as far as a rotating lineup, but uh, they've had a significant amount of change. Okay, it's on Wikipedia page. That's when you know it's a lot. Page. So. I am. At least I got a Wikipedia page. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Thunderdome Metal Reviews, and we'll catch you next time.